Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay here. So I was on YouTube earlier and some audio forums and I feel like there's quite a bit of a split between people's opinions on the Crown Amplifier. Like some people really like the Crown Amplifier to an extent where they think these are the giant killers. And then there's people on the other side of the spectrum that basically think the Crown is complete shit. So let's talk about it with the specific model I have in here for review, the Crown 2502. So as you may know, the Crown 2502 is a professional amplifier and a requirement for a quality pro amplifier is pretty simple than what you may think, especially in comparison to hi-fi standards. These are meant to be used in like venues, concerts, studios, and I've seen quite a few DJs use it before. So it uses class D amplification, to reduce the number of parts to keep the weight light and having less parts also means less parts to service. So uh, that's a plus. It also doesn't get hot like class A or class AB amplifiers so you can rack mount these or it can be stacked on top of each other or other components if needed. And an insane amount of power is usually required for a pro, pro amplifier so that it can play loud in certain situations and it does output an insane amount of power. The specific model I have here, the Crown 2502, outputs 440 watts into 8 ohms, 775 watts into 4 ohms, and 1200 watts into 2 ohms. And if you were to bridge this, meaning having two of these, uh, you get like 1550 watts into 8 ohms and 2400 watts into 4 ohms. And there's no 2 ohm rating if you bridge them because when you bridge an amplifier, it typically won't be stable in 2 ohms. Uh, but that's besides the point. And that's pretty much it as far as a requirement for a pretty decent pro amplifier goes. So to be fair, Crown does exactly what it's supposed to do and already achieved its goal as a pro amplifier. The question is, in the context of hi-fi, does it work? And why shouldn't it work? If it's a pro amplifier in a pro audio world, it should work for consumer audio, right? Right? Well, not exactly. There are things that some hi-fi enthusiasts may find a little different to say the least about a pro amplifier like this. So first things first, sound. Even to hi-fi class D standards, these pro amps are gonna sound a little bit different from class C amps that you may be used to like the Hypex or PS Audio or NAD. Um, the highs are surprisingly smooth, okay, and perhaps actually the most pleasantly smooth high frequency in a class D amplifier I've heard. But it also feels like it's rolled off, like it, it feels closed down. There's not much air or extension in the high frequencies. Honestly, this can be beneficial with like speakers you really like, but find it slightly bright. Like for me, I am currently reviewing the Jamo speakers and these pair up quite well with these crowns. It tames the higher frequencies a little bit more to my liking. Even the Elac Vela 407 speakers that I reviewed recently, they weren't bad at all with the crowns either. Seemed a little bit more closed down on the higher frequencies compared to when I had it hooked up to other hi-fi components, but it wasn't bad. Then we go to something a little bit more demanding in quali quality like the MagnaPen speakers and it just falls apart and sounds pretty bad. The mid-range is actually pretty good and honestly other than a slightly dry or cool feeling to it with speakers known for their transparency like the like Vela 407 speakers or the MagnaPan speakers, the mid-range was actually very hard not to like with most speakers. The bass is probably the best thing about this amplifier. It's pretty impressive bass control and authority for an 11 pound amplifier. Honestly, put it side by side to any well-known class AB designs like Pear Sound or Hegel, and as far as bass is concerned, it performs on even grounds. I've heard of people driving their subwoofers or even using the crown for the lower frequencies in a biamp configuration, and personally, I think that may actually be a perfect way to use the crown in a hi-fi or home theater application. For strictly stereo use, personally, the sound is a little 2D in comparison to the hi-fi gear I'm used to that's a little bit more three-dimensional and holographic. The crown doesn't have quite the width or the depth in comparison. But if you are looking for a more intimate presentation with great bass in both amount and quality, that's what crown does well. Now, a little sidetracking here, there is a way around to get more airy feeling, three-dimensionality, and reduce the dryness to the sound with the crown, um, and that's by using a tube preamplifier. 
but good tube preamplifiers can be quite expensive and quickly pass the price point of the Crown 2502, so it doesn't make sense. However, there are two preamplifiers that I would recommend with the Crown to help with the higher frequencies and three-dimensionality, and that's the Junction JA1 Class A solid state preamp, which retails for $630 before shipping, and Sound Artist Pre-1 tube preamplifier, which retails for $320 before shipping. Those two preamps make a fantastic combination with the Crown. At the given price point, especially, it's, it's a deal. Also, if you're running these with sensitive speakers, there's an audible noise floor that can be heard. I can still hear it with less sensitive speakers like the Elac Vela 407 or the Jamo speakers, but this noise floor is gone while playing music. So here is the test with the sensitive Tecton speakers rated for 98 dB in sensitivity with the mics placed in the listening spot. And here is the test with the Jamo C93 speakers rated for 88 dB in sensitivity. So other than those little things in sound that may be a little bit different from standard hi-fi gear that you may be used to, or I may be used to, uh, there are other things that may be slightly different from your traditional hi-fi gear in things like usage and aesthetics. So taking a look inside the amplifier, there's going to be some decent parts inside, but you obviously aren't going to get anything super crazy. And is that glue? Glue? Okay, jokes aside, in all honesty, this glue helps to keep things in place so that things don't bump into one another, especially because professional settings, they don't have time to baby the audio gear like some hi-fi folks do. It's a work tool as far as the professionals are concerned. The glue is just not very elegantly applied and that may bother you, or it may not, but at least you know those capacitors aren't going anywhere. Now in the back, you have some connectors that you probably haven't seen in too many Hi-Fi products and certainly something most of you will never use in addition to the ones you, you would use. So there's the set of your standard binding post, except that you can only use bare wire or banana plugs, no space. And in addition to that, there's the speak on connection, which is a pro audio connector and something most of you will never touch. It has balanced XLR and RCA inputs. And in addition to that, a set of quarter inch inputs, which most of you probably won't touch as well. And there's a fan that starts if the amplifiers worked hard Although I personally never saw the amp work hard enough in a hi-fi setting to see the fan running. So all that can be a little odd for some people looking at this amplifier for hi-fi applications, but the good news is that it has all the inputs and outputs needed for a hi-fi application as well. Another thing that may be worth noting is that, again, although this may not be a big issue for pro audio applications, the unit doesn't have any feet, so putting this on top of something that you want to keep scratch free is probably not wise. And other than that, if it tends to slide easier so on smooth surfaces uh, without the feet. This is easily fixable by purchasing your own rubber feet. They should cost you around $13 on Amazon. Taking a look at the front, you get holes for ventilation and gain adjustment for left and right channels, which can also work as a balance control in case you have more volume from one of your speakers due to placement or on, on ideal room situations. You get a LED indication to know if the amp is clipping, which it never did for me, even when I was driving Magnet Pants 1.7i with these at full blast. No doubt these can drive the Magnet Pan speakers, but I personally can't recommend them for the magnet pan speakers because it's like the transparency of the magnet pans are taken away and it sounds a little spitty and dry. You of course get a power button as well, but there is also an LED display that has some settings you may want to go into and we won't go through each of these settings in this video, but I will briefly explain the main things you can do. For one thing, if you are not a fan of the blue LED lights or the LED meter, then you can turn, turn it off uh, in the settings. Personally, I prefer it with the lights and the meters off. It's just not my thing. There's also DSP in the crown, which allows you to set the crossover points for high pass, low pass, and band pass filters. This can be helpful for certain situations, like if you want the subwoofer to take over at a certain frequency. Let's say I'm getting the crown for my 2.1 home theater and I want the subwoofer to do everything from 100 hertz and below. Then I can set the high pass to 100 hertz so that my main speakers are playing everything above 
100 hertz. Of course, this is just one example on how you can use a DSP. So circling back to what we were talking about in the beginning of the video, do I think these are the giant killers like people said, or do I think it's absolute shit? Well, frankly, I think either side of the claim about the crown is right and wrong at the same time, because it ultimately depends on your usage and application. No gear is perfect, especially for $600. And people who probably think it's the best thing in the world either have speakers that match well with the crown or use it to help their musical or home theater experience in some other way like powering their subwoofers. The people that say it's shit may be pairing it up with speakers that doesn't sound all that great with the crown like the MagnaPan speakers. Or maybe the difference is I've mentioned both sound and usage of the crown gear compared to a more traditional hi-fi gear is not acceptable to them. And what you want to achieve is different and subjective from person to person. So I am sure if you like the crown, you have your reasons. And if you don't like the crown, then you have your reasons as well. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. And a fan that starts if the amplifier is worked hard and all. And a fan that starts if the amplifier is worked hard. And a fan that starts